What's going on you guys? It's be your boy Scotty and we're here for my review on The Real Housewives of Atlanta Season 11 um, Part 1 Reunion. So we're going to get right on into this shit. Um, we're going to I like the way they've edited the reunion, okay? I like the way they're showing the behind the scenes, the little phone calls before the reunion and all of that stuff. So, I'm really enjoying it already, okay? So, we're going to start it off with NeNe's phone conversation with Marlo the ass kisser, okay? That bitch cannot be a fucking Aquarius. I don't see how she can be one. We do not claim you, Marlo. We don't claim you man low, period. You are not an Aquarius. We do not kiss ass for nobody, okay, bitch? But you all up NeNe's ass. You so far up NeNe's ass. You far up NeNe's ass more so than Cynthia ever was, bitch. So, whatever, but Nene is always thinking that somebody's coming against her. Nene is always thinking somebody's plotting against her. It's always about Nene, 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 Nene. Candy had the audacity to hug me and tell me that she loved the both of us when she was sitting up here lying to me about Kenya being there. Why the fuck does Kenya keep you so pressed? Why does Kenya keep you so bothered? It doesn't make any sense, but you know what? Aquarians keep motherfuckers bothered. For whatever reason, we keep a bitch bothered. Simply because we don't give a fuck. We gonna keep a bitch bothered every motherfucking time. So, Kenya can walk through the building. She can wake up and breathe and Nene gets mad. Like, it don't make no sense. All because someone showed up to somebody else's event. You that damn mad and you think that somebody trying to plot against your bitch ass? Girl, bye. You are not motherfucking like Queen She, but you're not, bitch. I, I, I swear to you, you're not. You're not. You really need to go somewhere and sit the fuck down because I'm over you. And I've been over you for a while. Like, it's just crazy to me how you get all these fillers, you get about seven nose surgeries, and you think you own. You ain't shit, bitch. You see that same bitch with the chiclet ass teeth just like I got from season one. You still insecure. And you still don't know how to act. Even with money, you still don't know how to level up, bitch. Like, come on now. Get over yourself. So Cynthia cries to Andy backstage. She said all she's ever done was try to be a good friend to Nene. And at this point, she's tired of it. Cynthia, you, you should have been tired a long motherfucking time ago, honestly. You should have been tired. You should have been tired. You should have been tired. A long motherfucking time ago, Cynthia. You should have been tired. Because Nene ain't never been your friend. Like... To me, it's like you really kissed up to Nene to be her friend, honestly. And Nene doesn't know how to have a friendship. Nene doesn't know how to be a friend. It's always about her. You got to do whatever the fuck Lenithia, Monique, Leek, say do in order to be her motherfucking friend. And that's the thing about me. You can't tell me what to do just to be your motherfucking friend. And that's why I'm not friends with certain people. I'm going to do whatever the fuck I want to do. I'm going to be friends with whoever the fuck I want to be friends with. I'm going to follow whoever the fuck I want to follow. I'm going to entertain whoever the fuck I want to. As long as I'm not doing no snake shit to you, it should not be a bother to you. Okay? So, Nene can really have a seat. And Cynthia, you can too at this point. Because at this point, Nene is not your friend. I don't know why you have any hope for that friendship. Because it's not a friendship. It's a damn jail cell. That's what it is. You're going to be in the jail cell long as you do whatever the fuck Nene say do. She good. But when you do one thing she don't like, she don't want to fuck with you no more. Fuck that bitch. You've been way too much of a friend to her. And that's just what it is. And you know, I've been hard on Cynthia for so many years on my reviews. Y'all know I have. It's just been recently where I really just open my eyes up to her just a little bit and let her make it just a tad. But Cynthia has always been a good friend of her, even to the point to where it looked like she kissed her ass. And I know exactly how that feels because why I've been a Cynthia before. I've been so loyal to people to the point to where it made people on the outside look at me as if I was kissing the per kissing somebody's ass. And I wasn't really kissed to my in my opinion though, just like in hers. I wasn't kissing ass. I was just merely being a good friend. But at this point in time, I can understand now why it looked that way. But me but me knowing what I know and knowing what was going on, I really wasn't kissing nobody's ass. I was just trying to be there for my friend being a ride or die. Because that's the type of nigga I am. And that's the type of bitch Cynthia is. But Nene doesn't respect that, nor does she appreciate that. She don't want friends. She wants maids. And Marlo was willing to be that. So we open up. Everybody pretty much looks good. Um, um, I, Shamari's fashion is leveling up. You know, she looking like a Mountain Dew can in that dress, but her fashions is, you know, leveling up. Candy, um, she's, I don't know 
what it is about Candy. These last two reunions, these last three reunions now, she's been wearing gold. And I'm guessing that's her color. But I do like the bang and the ponytail. Looks good on her. No comment on seven nose. Portia looks good in all black with um her pregnant belly coming out. I like the way her hair looked. Cynthia always looks good. And Eva was slaying the bitches that whole reunion. Like, she looked damn good. The haircut, the dress, she was not coming in to play with nobody. Y'all know I'm all about the eyebrows. And the eyebrows was on point. So, all about the eyebrows. So, go in, um, Eva. Um... We talked about Portia's baby shower and everybody was there except for Candy and Nene. But Candy sent Portia some gifts, which we all saw on Portia's Instagram yeah, live. Yes, I follow Portia again on Instagram because I've been unfollowed her ass a long time ago. But now I follow her again. But that does not mean I like her. <laughs> I'm just saying. But, uh, but yeah. Um, but yeah, so... Um, we go into that and, you know, Candy sent the gift, but Nene didn't send shit. And she ain't gonna send shit. And she said, well, I was in Canada during the time that your baby child was coming up. But someone said that she was at a Floyd Mayweather party. But she clearly says that she was in fucking Canada. And I'm like, okay, Nene, whatever. And Nene's whole aura is just negative. Like, she is such a fucking bitch. When Andy said something to her about um being the wig being the glue to hold her wig together and her family. She also said into this cast as well. Like she's coming in being a big bitch that we know her to be. And it's just ridiculous to me. And I'm just not for her. Like I'm not for this bitch period. Like Nene is already like on my least favorite list at this point. Because it's just ridiculous. Like I just can't with her. Honestly. Um, She's so quick to call. Um, Let me see. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, she wasn't at the baby shower, basically. And she ain't, you know, she ain't sending no damn gifts. Because Nene don't give a fuck about nobody but herself. Like, if the, if, the, if the light ain't on her, she don't give a fuck. And that's really what it is. Um... So we get into Portia and her love life with Dennis. And her relationship with her mother-in-law. And I must say that at the beginning of the season, I was absolutely annoyed with Portia and how giddy she was and how she was coming off like a high school girl over Dennis and it's really funny because at this point in my life I'm kind of giddy and acting like a high school girl right now isn't that funny and I kind of believe that during that particular time when she was doing all of that, it wasn't necessarily anything wrong with it. I'm believing that I was only reacting that way because I was going through my own relationship woes at the time. And anything that had anything to do with people being lovey-dovey was annoying to me. So I was kind of bitter during that time. Like, during that time when she was like, oh, no, I did it, oh, no, I did it, you know what I'm saying? It was kind of like... Bitch, calm down. It ain't that serious. Of course, I had that opinion because I was going through some real relationship woes. I was upset. I was mad, angry, pressed, all of that. But now I understand what she means because when you're in the happy place, there's nothing. There's, that is a high that you cannot come down from. And now I understand because I have that same high at this point. So it's kind of like... I do understand what she means when it comes down to that. Um, that is a high that you can't come down from. Point blank period is really a high that you can't come down from. I do get it. Like, I, I'm not necessarily in love with anyone. But, you know, when you're, like, when you're dating and a person makes you feel good about yourself. And they just makes everything about you glorious. It does make you feel good inside. And it does... You know, make you feel like you are everything and more. You know what I mean? So, I know exactly how she feels right now. And, um, it's good to see people happy. Um, she's happy at this point. She used to be with Cordell. He was very controlling towards her. She wasn't able to be herself. She she had to turn around and be some Stepford wife that 
she knew that she never was. And you could tell that after she left him, she reverted to someone else. And I believe that someone else was who she was before she married him. So kudos to Portia and Dennis for just, even though the relationship moved a, quick, a bit fast. You know, I'm not a big fan of fast moving relationships, but sometimes things move fast and it's not necessarily a bad thing, honestly. So good, good things for them. I could tell that her and her mother-in-law don't have the best relationship and I could clearly see that when she first came on the show this season. I could tell that, you know, she really wasn't, you know, all that. But, you know, hopefully everything gets better. But she happy, she glowing, she big and pregnant and that's all that matters. Um, when it comes down to motherhood and career, because at this point, Portia has a career of her own at this point. She's doing well for herself, but now she got a baby. So how is that going to translate into her life? Well, she said that if she had to choose anybody to talk to about that stuff, the best person for her to talk to would be Candy. And I totally agree. Um, Candy's still trying to have babies, even though she has a career that keeps, you know, growing and rising as time goes on. So what was good about Portia and Candy is that I'm glad that they are in a good space right now. Um, you know, it's good to see them back in a good space. Um... They were great friends at one point or another, so that's why it's good in my eyes because I used to love the trio that was Candy, Portia, and Phaedra. And I used to love them all together. And I really loved Candy and Portia's relationship because Candy really did take Portia in as a little sister. And when all this stuff happened, you know, it went to hell. But at the end of the day, I, I'm glad to see them in a better place. Now, again... Does my opinion of Portia really change? No. I don't know if it ever will, but I don't know. I mean, who knows? I did follow her again on Instagram, but who knows? I don't know if that is that if that's ever going to change. I'm really hard at, you know, letting shit go. <laughs> so, you know, it is what it is. But it's good to see them in a better place. I will say that. Um, next thing you know, Portia blasts Nene for being not being supportive and Nene hasn't been like I like I don't know I mean Nene is supportive when it when it, when she wants to be supportive you know she didn't come to the gender reveal she didn't come to her baby shower and she was like you you are not a supportive person you are not a supportive person and you are not a supportive person you are not and my thing about it is like Nene it, it's just crazy to me how she changes at the drop of a dime because Half the season, her and Portia were bosom buddies again. And I really enjoyed them being together as friends. You know, like like I said, at the beginning of the season, I wasn't really feeling Portia. Still wasn't really feeling Portia. She was irking me with everything. But with they, when they were showing their relationship, I liked that relationship. Despite how I felt about Portia, I did like Nene and Portia's relationship. I've always liked their big sister, little sister relationship. But now it just seems to me like... They're not friends, and they were never friends because of the way that Nene is acting. Like, Nene is being a big-ass bitch right now, and it's crazy to me how she can be a big bitch. Um, is Eva really shady? The answer is hell the fuck yes. Eva is really shady to the point to where she doesn't even remember what the fuck shade that she even threw at a motherfucker. That's how shady she is, and she don't even think that she's shady, but bitch, you shady, and you just need to own up to the fact that you shady. And... You know, the whole thing with Cynthia, you know, the mother walk, you know, the veteran walk. Um, Cynthia didn't feel no type of way about that. But when it came down to the black with a cute thing, you know what I mean? Her and Candy had a little spat about it. And to be quite honest, I wasn't even thinking about the fact that uh, she was trying to say Shamari wasn't in a singing group because Shamari wasn't a spy. Shamia was an aspiring singer because honestly, I never knew that Sh Shamia even sung. Okay, I just knew that she used to be a cheerleader. I didn't know that she could sing. So, in so many words, it could have easily been taken offense to you know the same way that Candy took it. Anybody could have took it that way because I was kind of side eyeing her comment when she said it because I didn't understand what the fuck she was talking about. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? You know what I mean? Like, why she say not black but cute? Like. It could be taken any type of way, and it was just some clever shade that winded up not being so clever, if you get what I mean. So, you know, Eva can just miss me with that, um, honestly. It's just the way that Candy took it the wrong way. Now, I do think that Candy should have just given Eva a fucking apology and just said, Okay, bitch, you know, you didn't mean, you didn't mean what I thought you meant, so I'm sorry for that, and... 
you know, I'm sorry that I took it the wrong way. Candy was fucked up for not giving her a fucking apology. Now, I will say that. Now, if I would have taken something the wrong way, me, I can... I don't like to apologize either. Aquarius Sun, Taurus Moon, I don't like to apologize. But if I know that I'm wrong, I will apologize. At some point. <laughs> At some point, I will. But, yeah, Candy owe Eve a fucking apology, honestly. But I'm glad they moved past that because it wasn't that damn serious. Andy and Candy connect on surrogacy. Now, I would never know what it's like to have anyone carry my child because me, personally, I don't want to have a baby. I don't want to be a father. Um, you know, people would people tell me, you know, my cousins, some of my friends, they'd be like, Scotty, you would be a good dad. You would be a good dad. Like, you're practically a father to your youngest brother because, you know, I'm 11 years older than my brother, so I'm pretty much taking care of him for most of his life. So, people be like, you know, you will be a good dad, Scotty. You know, you, you just give it a chance. You know, give it a chance, whatever. I say, I don't want to be a father because as giving as I am, I'm a bit selfish too. Like, I can give, but I don't want to be responsible for another life, if that makes any sense. Like, I have a niece and a nephew, my brother and sister, they had babies. And, um... Most of my friends have kids, and I'm like the surrogate uncle to their kids. And I love buying stuff for the kids. I love giving the kids money for their birthdays and all of that stuff. Like, I like being a cool uncle that they like to be around. Every, all of my friends' kids, you know, call me Uncle Scotty. And it, I like that, you know what I mean? But I don't want no kids of my own, especially now that I'm 30. I definitely don't want no kids of my own right now. Uh, no. No, I don't want none in, in my 40s, 50s, none. I don't want no kids. But Andy and Candy had a great moment. And it is astonishing to see um, a surrogate person carry your baby. That's a big sacrifice. A sacrifice that they don't even have to make for anybody. So kudos to Candy and Ty for doing what they do. Um, as far as Mama Joyce and Ty getting over the lemon tree, Ty is making his own lemonade. And I hope he name it Marvin's Lemonade. That's what I hope he makes. That's what I hope the title of the lemonade is. And I hope it's sold in all Walmart stores because y'all know I love me some Walmart and I'd be all up in that bitch buying me some buying me some Marvin's Lemonade. Um, Portia believed that she should get a kickback for the uh dungeon party, and that shit was funny as a motherfucker. Um Nene was throwing shade at Candy's singing ability all season. So when she was asked, was Candy a good singer? She said, it's not that I don't think that she's a good singer. It was all fun shade, but I think that she's a great writer. Bitch, you don't think you just said. You, if you don't, girl, whatever. But Candy didn't give a fuck. Nene, what can you do? You can't sing. You can't even act. So what are you saying? Like you ba like when you play on anything, you're basically playing Nene Leaks. You're not a good actress. So I mean, whatever. You ain't really got that much talent. But uh, whatever. Um, social media issues. Um, let's see. Nene always puts everything on social media. She always puts her business on social media. Her friendship business, her relationship business, everything is always on fucking social media. She's a social media bully in my opinion sometimes. Like, you can tell when she mad at somebody, she goes on social media and start blasting them. And, th and this is what I don't like, okay? Whatever happened to the days to where when you had an issue with a friend, you just pick up the phone and you call them. Instead of getting your ass on Twitter, getting your ass on Instagram, getting your ass on Facebook, hell, getting your ass on Snapchat, Snapchat to throw shade. Me personally, everybody knows that I am the king of picking up that phone to text a bitch or call the nigga and let them know you piss me off. I'm not going to throw no shade at you on, on social media. That's just something I'm not going to do. I ain't never been that type of person to do that. Because when people do that, I just feel like I can't trust you. You want to put our friendship or our relationship business out on Front Street for the world to see. You know what I mean? And that's just not cool to me. And I don't like it. And that's just what it is. It's fucked up. And I don't like that shit. Point blank, period. And she always do that. She always put up negative ass quotes, throwing shade, taking shots at people and all of that stuff. Candy and Portia, you know, they still don't follow each other on Instagram. But they cool. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, we're good where we at. You know what I mean? They still don't follow each other and that's fine. But at least they are cool with each other. You know what I mean? It's kind of like, you know, I don't know. But 
The only way I unfollow you is if I really don't fuck with you no more. Like, I don't want to see you on nothing. Like, you know, like, on YouTube, who do I follow on on social media? Because it's not that many. Um, of course, I follow Jamar. Of course, I follow uh, Barry Blue, Miles, Rox, Ashley, um, Alex. James, I think I follow properly bonafide, aka cemented. I think I follow her too. Um, like if I really like you, you know, I follow you. Live with Leah, you know, of course, Bianca Brooks, of course, you know, Geeks, you know, even Geeks from back in the gap when I first started getting on YouTube, you know, I follow motherfuckers. You know, like if I really, really like you, a fuck with you, you know, I will like your pictures, I will follow you. You know what I mean? If I don't follow you, I don't really fuck with you like that. Or if you unfollow me, I'm gonna unfollow your ass the fuck back. That's just how petty I am. I will unfollow your ass. If you don't follow me. I ain't no point of me following you and you unfollow me. Now, it might it now I think it's just one person that um that probably unfollow me that I still followed and I really haven't had the time to unfollow their ass yet. But it is what it is. But other than that, um, you know, if I like if I fuck with you, I'm gonna follow you. But if I don't really like you like that, I'm not following you. If I like if I don't fuck with you, I'm definitely not following you. Like, point blank, you know. Um, but it is what it is, though, but NeNe and Cynthia are friends, and basically NeNe want to say that the hashtag chill was too much, and it was insecure, and she just finds anything negative. Like, when she mad with you, she want to tell you to fuck down, and that's all she ever does. I just can't stand that big silver back quarterback ass bitch. Fuck NeNe and them 10 damn nose that she got, y'all. I just can't. But, y'all, that was my review of the reunion for the first part. First half of the reunion, however, of the Housewives of Atlanta. I just hope that this whole reunion with Nene, with NeNe's negative ass attitude did not take away from the positive energy that I've been giving on most of my videos over the last couple of weeks, okay? I have been so positive lately, and everybody been seeing my spirit shine on all of my damn videos. So, I hope Nene did not ruin it, okay? But with that being said, y'all, follow me on all social media. It's all at the bottom. And be sure to like, rate, comment, and subscribe and share my video. Till love and hip-hop later on, I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.